Okay, um, so next up we are going to get into uh, a pretty neat section where we uh, authorize our users. And so, um, back that lab up, this is lab 402. And so these two things are kind of getting us ready for, um, for some labs coming around the corner. And so I'm going to continue working on this dog walker app. And... Um, bring that over. Now, uh, what is authorization? You know, authentication is what we just got done talking about, the process of proving your identity. Authorization is a process of determining if you have permission to perform an action or, you know, view some data. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll authorize our users um, to basically buy the routes. And so we could say, hey, you know, depending on the role that you have, you're either authorized or not authorized. And, you know, um, if you're logged in, for example, you know, maybe you have to be logged in, maybe you have to have a specific role. There's different ways to do authorization. And we can kind of hit on that at a, uh, today, but, um, you know, I, I think this is a, a pretty neat uh, part of software development when you could say, okay, yes, not only do we have a login system now, um, but then depending on your roles, your permissions, you can get access to a resource or not. Um, so this implies you must be authenticated before you're authorized. You cannot give someone permission without knowing who first who they are. Okay. Um, and so, you know, there's some, some kind of reading that you can do through here, um, you know, in some different examples of um, authorization and, and how how they're used, um, you know, when it comes to what we're going to do, as we've already done, our users will have roles. And based on that role, um, again, you can kind of have a single role or a user can have multiple roles. In other words, um, here, a role is a single role is in a string, or you can have an array of roles. Um, and we can, we can do both of those. Now, um, you know, in the world of IT, uh, you, you typically want to um, assign permissions to groups. Roles are just another name for groups. And so if you have even a single user, you know, that, that you want um, to have a certain permission, you typically want to put them into a group, you want to put them into a role, so that when you have more users who want those same permissions down the line, you can, um, you can put that user into the, those new users into those roles. Point is, you just don't want to assign um, permissions to individual users, you want to assign permissions to roles. Um, but it can be, it can just be, you know, that you can have role-based uh, authorization and that's what we're going to do we're just gonna say hey are you a member of this role yes or no it is also the case that you can have more fine-grained permissions and so if you get into like Windows administration or server administration a lot of times you can get um, um, very fine-grained permissions uh, which says hey you can edit this you can update this you can change passwords um, and then what you do is you basically take the roles that you have and give them um, certain permissions. And so here a user can have an array of roles and then each role has its own set of permissions. We're, for what we're doing um, in this particular um, class, we're not gonna get quite so deep into having fine-grained permissions and then assigning those permissions to the role. We're going to keep it more um, just basically at the role level. Everything's going to be based on your role, whether you do or do not have access to a route. Um, but, um, you know, how to actually have these fine grained permissions and configurable roles, it's all in here. Um, if you wanted to go that deep, you can. Um, and then there's, you know, in this lecture, here's some real world examples, all sorts of different softwares that have different roles and each role has different permissions. So, you know, whether it's uh, PHP, uh, Blackboard, um, or Bulletin Board, 
uh, WordPress. These are all Drupal. These all have different roles and permissions. Um, Windows is what I'm most familiar with, um, you know, giving different roles, different permissions. Linux, MySQL. You know, point is you see these role-based permissions um, in lots of softwares. Um, and so this is a, a very, you know, homegrown solution. And so this is uh, a package that uh, is not necessarily uh, widely used in the community. Um, however, it's going to, you know, I think it's pretty powerful. Um, so this was, you know, published by a ranking instructor about a year ago um, where we're going to do some uh, authorization. And so um, what this will allow us to do, and I guess we can just get into it, um, are those permissions. So let's open up our uh, dog walker app. This is kind of where we left it off. And at this point, um, users can uh, register. Users can log in. Um, with find user by email. So you can register, you can log in, users can be updated, and users can be deleted. And that's kind of where um, we're at. And so if I kind of hop over to my database, right now I've got one user. We'll be deleting this user a bunch. Uh, actually, I, I deleted my user. So if I kind of boot up my app, Should be able to register a new user and and we're off um, so to get started um, what I'm going to do again this is a uh, homegrown solution right this is a solution um, kind of custom solution for Rankin but I, I like it it's a good solution we're going to install this package um, the URL is right here and I will post it in the Discord channel. Um, and so, of course, you could see the URL on the video. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and install that. Okay, so kind of the prerequisites for this, um, for using this package is that you want to have um, a cookie with an auth token in it and that's what we have and so when I look at what was just created um, when I registered a user uh, I did create a cookie a cookie cookie called auth token and of course everything inside that auth token the payload the data is encrypted Okay, and just to kind of go back to what data um, are we storing in our payload um, right now? Um, here's our issue auth token. You can see our payload basically has a user ID in it, a user email, and a role. And so that's the data that we're basically storing in our cookie that's going to help create a session between the client and the server. Um, now that this cookie is saved here you know the data that's in there um, so that's the prerequisite to to using this package is you want to um, have that set up let's go ahead and now that we installed let's go ahead and run and um, what we're going to do is we're going to configure this uh, package as middleware on our server js so let's go back to our server JS and we're going to bring in this package. Um, I'm going to bring in config as well. I just don't have import config from config. And it's not in packet. So we'll bring in config first. Now I'll bring in import, this is in Curly's, auth middleware from Merlin for Express auth. 
Now, anytime you see app.use, that's where we're bringing in middleware. Um, so this middleware, what it's going to do is it's going to make your auth token available to all of your routes. And so, and so instead of going to each route and kind of, um, you know, calling this middleware function, we install the middleware function at, um, at the server JS. Again, this makes it available for all of your routes. And so, um, you know, what I'm basically coding here is um, this line of code right here in the installation. Um, it says, hey, uh, your token, um, your, your JWT token should have a, a key that helps it become encrypted. Um, so we need to, our key is stored in our config. So we're gonna get our config key. Um, this option right here is the name of our cookie. Um, the name of our cookie, well, we created the cookie called auth token. Um, and so here, that'll be a static coded auth token. And then this is your um, token options. And so um, you can kind of see, we can kind of refresh the cookie and make it available for um, a longer duration when, um, you know, if it's available, we can basically extend the maximum age from that current moment when you kind of boot the app, okay? So point is, we're gonna bring in auth middleware and this is gonna allow us, ultimately this is gonna allow us to have um, some authorization um, on our routes. And so let's code that up. app.use auth middleware now the first argument is our auth secret now our auth secret um, is configured in auth.secret right here points us at the environment variable auth secret um, which is in our environment variable right there okay now if this all secret doesn't match your secret when you you know encrypted your data of course um, you're not gonna be able to get your token if you can't get your token none of this is gonna work so um, right now we're gonna say config dot get auth dot secret so if our config package is wired up correctly the name of the token in our, our, the name of our cookie is auth token. And the options here are HTTP only, true, and max age. And everything that we've been doing, I'll just kind of say we're expiring in, that's one hour, uh, 1000 times 60 times 60. So I'm going to say that max age of that. Okay, so we've brought in our middleware. We've made it available to all of our routes. And that's the first step to, to doing this. Now, what this is going to allow us to do is to say, hey, um, you have to be maybe logged in and if you want to delete a user, okay, if you want to delete a user, maybe you have to be an admin. Um, and so you, you would make sure that they have an admin role. Um, or at minimum, you know, just make sure you have a logged in user, you know, for example. And so we can, at this point, um, and this is pretty incredible how, how this all comes together, uh, at this point, we can bring in some of those role uh, some of those functions going back to the package you can kind of see what are the methods that are available to us because we've got um, we've got the middleware configured now we scroll down this is an important thing to realize um, once the middleware is installed check we did that 
and configured in the application, a new field will be accessible on the request object to your other routes. So here's a route, and you're gonna notice there's a new object called rec.auth. Okay, again, rec coming from the client, so the, the cookie kind of coming from the client, it has a payload in it, right? And so if the, the token is valid, then rec.auth will be the token's payload, okay? And so um, that's, that's an important thing to note, okay? Now, getting into the function, there is a function called isLoggedIn um, that can be used as middleware now. So if we bring in this function, then we, then we call this isLoggedIn function, and um, if, if, if this is not true, the user is not logged in, um, you could see it will send a 401 error that the user is not authenticated. Okay, so let's bring that in. The function is called is logged in on the users. Import is logged in from, okay, let me make sure my caps is right, is capital L, capital I, okay express.auth and because it's not a local package we do not provide the .js okay and so now we can kind of come right down here and say hey if we are going to maybe delete a user okay we're gonna call is logged in okay and so if if at minimum you're not logged in, um, you're not gonna be able to delete a user. Now, um, right now we don't have a cookie. Um, so let's kind of see what the status is of our database. Okay, we've got one user here. Maybe let's just delete this user. Let's delete this user, kind of start fresh. And let's register a new user. Okay, so there's the ID. Now, here's our cookie that's um, our auth token that's proven that we've logged in. Again, that kind of um, proves that we're authenticated. Now, if I go to delete user and I paste Let's go ahead and send that, and we get user deleted. Okay, that's that's kind of where we left it off. But here, let's do this. Let's create my user again. Okay, there's my ID. All right, now let's delete the cookie, right? So now this function right here, if I clear all cookies, okay, that means now there's no cookie on the client. Okay, so now if I paste that in, right and I'm not I haven't logged in at this point okay bingo so we get an error back that says you are not logged in now I want to kind of point this out this is a good point to point this out this is this is working um, but it is crashing our application okay and so what we have been doing has been writing these try catches but um, we're in in some cases in some of our applications we haven't wrote um, a, a line of code inside of our server. And so we, we've done this in, in some of our labs, um, but it's not in, in our dog walker. And so there is uh, an error handler. So I'm going to register an error handler to uh, handle well, to handle our errors, and, and basically this will stop uh, stop exceptions, stop exceptions from crashing the app. And this is something that, um, it's more middleware, app.use, we've err rec res next, Arrow function. 
Uh, oops. And what we'll do is just res status 404 JSON error. Um, so if you remember exception handling, um, you you bubble up the exceptions. And so when we kind of throw an exception somewhere, this is kind of like a, this is where our catches send our exceptions up to. And let me make sure I got that right. Um, um, as far as the actual status code we can do er dot status or 500 if there's a status code then provide the status code otherwise the status code will be 500 um, so now if I go back um, if I send this now we no longer crash our app because we got that essentially exception handling working now uh, says you are not logged in and that's what we would expect because there's no cookie now um, if I log in my user welcome back okay now I've got an auth token okay so if I try and delete my user and let me make sure I got the right ID of the user that I'm trying to delete. Um, whoop, postman, delete user, paste. Okay, we already demonstrated, hey, if you're not logged in, um, but if you are logged in, boom, user deleted, and we can kind of go back into here and refresh Okay, so there's some permissions, right? You have to at least be logged in. Um, to go back just a step and show you something else. Um, so here I said, hey, um, there is now a field uh, that's the payload, uh, const data payload equals rec.auth. So when you install this middleware, this middleware makes a new field available that you know has your payload in it, right? So I could say data payload, and let's just do a debug user router and say the payload includes. You know, what does it include? Um, well, when we, I got a curly off somewhere. Oh, dollar sign. There we go. Okay. Uh, what am I doing here? Uh, auth. Oh, I just need to put data in there. Okay, um, what does it what does it include? So, kind of going back to when we signed our token, right? JWT dot sign. We decided what goes into the payload right here on line thirty seven. So right now it has a user ID, an email, and a role. Okay, so these are the fields that should be available to us through rec dot auth. And so data payload dot email was one of those fields. And data payload dot what, underscore ID and 
roll. Okay, and so those were the, this is gonna be useful for us um, as we move forward. Um, and so I wanted to show that. So now we should be able to register a new user. Okay, there's our, there's our user ID. Uh, we have a token, we have a cookie with a token in it. And so if we go to paste that and we delete another user, now just as a demonstration, it says the payload includes my email address, my ID, and my role that I have uh, put into the payload. Uh, so this is pretty cool stuff. Now, um, very simply next, uh, there is another uh, has, and there's different um, methods that you can bring in. And again, I would encourage you to kind of look at this, um, look at the documentation here on this package. And you can see, okay, whether a user has any role at all. Okay, so if there's no roles, you know, that's not going to work uh, that are associated with the user. Um, but has role can say, hey, uh, check to see if the authenticated user uh, has the role of admin. And so this is pretty cool because, well, our users have roles. And right now, um, when we uh, create our user, it's developer. Uh, I think I just deleted the user. So uh, let's create a user and let's just say I'm a quality analyst. Okay, so my user has been created. Let me just prepare the deletion. Now, you know my role is developer. Um, so let's bring in has role. Let's go back to my delete route. Okay, and not only can we make sure that they're logged in, let's just say has role of developer. So we're, we're setting it up so that only developers um, can, can delete our users. And going back to delete user, now I'm logged in, but I'm not, I shouldn't um, have the right role. And there it is, you don't have any of these roles the role of developer. So um, what I could do is I could go to my update route and change my role to developer. Uh, and here's what I would say about that. So here's my, here's my update admin route. Um, and we kind of go through here. Now notice if I update a user, what I don't do here is I don't reissue the token. And so the payload um, needs to, you know, have the new user's role. So I need to actually update my token um, and reissue my, my cookie. And so if this is going to work where I'm going to update the user's role and then I'm going to delete because I now have the permissions, um, before I, whenever I do my modified count, Let's call that method and issue a new token and issue a new cookie, okay? So let's do that. So if modified count is one, um, what is my function name? It is named issue auth token. And updated user. I don't think any of these are, um, okay. Yeah, they're not asynchronous. So issue auth token, and then let's issue auth cookie. So I'm gonna issue auth token, and then I'm going to issue auth cookie, passing it the response object. Because you have to put the cookie in the response, and then the token. So this should say const auth token equals, and then you send auth token over. This function should return your auth token, 
and then that puts it in a cookie. Okay, so now if we update our user, we issue a new cookie with the data in it. So here, um, gonna make sure I've got my right. So let's get the user ID here. So here's my user in my database. You can see quality analyst. I demonstrated that I cannot delete because I'm not a developer. And so if I go here and I change my role to developer, but I have to get the right ID. So let's copy that, paste, which ends in eight. It does end in E8. Okay, role of developer. Okay, it says user updated. Let's go back, refresh. Okay, I now have a role of developer and my cookie should have been updated. And if I go to delete, now I have been, I've deleted the users. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and so has role can work with one role, it can work with multiple roles. You could say, okay, hey, if the user is either an admin or a moderator, um, you can, you can um, have access to the route. We get into fine-grained permissions. Uh, if a user has permissions in here, um, again, not necessarily for what we're gonna do in our labs or in our tests, but it does, this, uh, this package can do more fine-grained permissions. And um, that's a much shorter lecture, much shorter code along. There's a couple more things I want to do to prep us for the lab. Um, Okay, so let's let's go back to my code. We now know how to make sure that a user is authenticated. They have a certain role to give us permissions to a route or not. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Now that we are requiring users to log in, um, part of the issue tracker says any operations that happen, um, which are, when I say operations, CRUD operations, any operation that happens, um, log that in the database as far as who was logged in. Uh, in other words, who deleted a user. Okay, so if, if we kind of go down here and you know we're gonna allow someone to delete a user we're going to log that in our database as far as who who uh, deleted our user right because right now the user just gets deleted but um, we don't we don't know who deleted that user but now that we are requiring authentication authorization, well, we can actually extract some of that um, out of our payload and say, okay, well, yeah, the user was deleted successfully and you know, this is our user who did that, right? Any CRUD operation, you delete a user, you create a log of who deleted it. You create, read, update, delete, all these operations um, can, can be tracked. And so in our database module, um, the method that we're going to write is called save something. What do I want to call it? Yeah. Uh, let's go down here. We're going to write an async function called save edit and so an edit um, maybe there's a better name because even when you do a create operation you know maybe we call it save operation um, 
and then what we'll do is we'll accept an object um, you know an object that has a lot of information in it to save to a new collection and so um, and if I think of it maybe it maybe I'll, I'll keep it save edit um, so here's our object and DB this is the So we're going to create a new collection called edits. Insert one, edit. Um, so when a user does a delete, we're going to log it, um, which is pretty cool. So let's export, save edit. And now we can call this function on all of our routes um, to, to create these logs. Um, so here, let's start with delete. Again, kind of now that we know who's doing what. Let's go to user. Okay, so before, this is our success, right? Before we send the data back to the client, we're gonna make an object and timestamp field, new date of today. Um, we're going to make a field called OP for the operation, which is delete by user ID. That's the operation at this route. Uh, the collection is the user's collection. The target is basically what um, ID are we deleting. And we've got the user ID inside of uh, rec.user ID. So this is the user that we deleted. And the auth is rec.auth. Again, we kind of know that the rec.auth includes our payload, right? Um, no semicolon. So here's our delete operation object. It's got a timestamp. What operation did we do? What collection did we do it on? Um, who did we do it to? And who did it? Is the rec dot off? And so now we just need to call our new function, which is save edit, await save edit. Now it's db module save edit and pass in our delete operation. Okay, so we can call a save edit in the event that this database operation works. We save the delete operation and then we say user ID deleted. So. All that's just to say, um, let's register a user. Let's now delete our user. And this should error out. You don't have the role of developer. So let's update our role of developer. Create, oh, these are not updated because we did not put the right object ID. User updated, okay. Um, and now our user has been deleted, but what did that just also do now? 
Now we have a collection called edits that says, okay, um, delete by user ID, the collection was users, uh, the target was this user, so we deleted that user, and ooh, that's close, IAT, EXP, uh, int32, so those are two fields that I want to see, so uh, rec.auth, oh, the payload includes undefined, undefined developer, that's a problem, that's that's a problem. So I think because when I modified my user, I must have screwed something up. So when I, let me go to my admin update route. Oh, updated user. Okay. Updated user only has the role of developer. Um, got it. And so, so I lost. I lost some of my data there, so let's fix that. Um, thinking a little bit on how I would want to implement this, um, you know, updated user comes from the body. And you could say um, we have the ID right, so const user current user equals await db module. Uh, find user by email oh wait a minute don't we have a find user by ID we don't let's make a function find user by ID I think I was in there originally, but I deleted it. But now we're at a place where I'd like it. Underscore ID equal to user ID. Export that function. Find user by ID. DB module dot find user by ID. Pass in rec dot user ID. So here we update their password to an encrypted password. Else if there is no password. set it to the current password so if there's a new password hash it otherwise keep the password the same um, so we could write that in maybe a shorter syntax right so a ternary operator would be something like is, does the updated user have a email question mark if they do um, you set that actually no here's what we'll do we'll write a if Updated user dot email is they 
don't have an email, then we set the email current user dot email. And that's what I meant to do up here. Current user dot email. So if they give us a, a pass a new password then we hash it. Otherwise, we set it to the current user email. And we say, hey, if there's no email provided for my updated user, then set it to the current. There we go, that's what I want. If the updated user in the third field is role, if there's no role, we'll set the updated user Role equal to the current user dot role. Now you might, if you have multiple roles, you have an array, then you might need to loop through that. Okay, but now now we have a way of like okay, setting those fields back to their current state. Um, now let's see where we are here. Okay, I'm just going to have no users, so let's create a user. Quality analyst. We already know that they're not going to be able to delete, so let's pull that ID. They're not going to be able to delete that because you're not a developer. And so if I go to my admin update, paste that in, role of developer, says the user is updated, and now it says user deleted, now I've got my email which is right, I've got the role which is right, the one thing still um, What is undefined? So let's. Da, 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 da. Where is that debug? User router. Where's that debug even coming from right now? Admin update route. Oh, that was on the delete. Oh, the ID. And I didn't do anything with the ID, actually. Updated user needs to maintain its ID. And they Updated user there we go that should do it user deleted let's create my user Let's pretend we can delete the user, but we can't. Let's update the role. Cannot read properties of null email. Okay, so that was on my update route. user 
can't read current user email. I bet that's what that is. Current user. Users coming back null. Uh, oh, let's update the right. There we go. Okay, I just didn't have the. Now it says user ID updated. user deleted now we've got all the data in there and bingo a current user was the table before I updated the the role so that's why the council table was showing the old one and yet if I go here that all worked. All that just to say, if I go back to edits, my latest one now has ID, email, and role. ID, email, and role. Okay, so we're going to do that again in the lab. Um, well, I guess we could do it maybe one more time here, right? So. Um, that's on a delete route so let's let's do this on my let's do this on my update route we'll just call this function one more time if modified count is one here um, we'll create another object here but it's no longer a delete operation this is now an edit operation and this is edit user edit user admin route the collection is user the target is the user ID and whoever's logged in is rec.auth okay so if I go here my user deleted. Let's register my user. If I go to admin update paste, change the role to developer. It says user ID updated. And if I refresh my edits. Come on in. Your homies pushed you over to this way. Okay, um, I'm just back from um, a little bit of a work-related break. Um, <clears throat> we're at a good stopping point. I, I will point out these fields here, IAT and EXP. You know, that's like your token expiration. And, um, you know, if you don't want those fields, um, that's very doable. You just, you know you can extract rec dot auth dot uh, email and you don't have to store the whole auth uh, object in there and so um, we, we may do that in the future but yeah insert operation delete operation um, so on and so forth we can now have logs um, so this is kind of the end of this week, and, and I realize this is a little heavier on the theory side. Um, next week, we're going to get started on the labs for implementing authentication and authorization on our 
um, issue tracker. Um, therefore, the only thing that's really due uh, this Sunday, we kind of had a shortened week for a couple of reasons. The only thing that's due this Sunday is the hands-on test. Um, we had a shortened week really um, because Monday was uh, a day off for all ranking employees for being Juneteenth. Okay, so that took like a, a standard four-day work week and it compressed it down to three days. And I gave essentially one day for uh, the hands-on test, giving, you know, uh, in person, I would give a day to work on a hands-on uh, test. So kind of looking at the calendar, I gave the 20th to work on the hands-on test. Yesterday, authentication. Today, authorization. You know, more of the theory stuff. Um, which brings us back next week and we'll get into the labs. So this Sunday, only thing that's due is your hands-on test number three. And I'll save all that work and close it down. Uh, have a good weekend. See you guys next week.